First impressions with Gil Kahele. He was big and strong. Don't mess with Gil Kahele. <laughs> but, but he was very friendly, easy to talk to. And because we love our sports, uh, we got to be good friends. I could always trust Gil, trust his judgment. And so I'm, for that, I will be always grateful to know Gil Kahele. In 1957, there was no county building. There was no state building. There was no judiciary building. Um, there was no Wailoa State Park. And in 1957 was the year that a small tsunami came into Hilo, through the river, up to the pond, and it overturned a lot of small skiffs and a lot of small boats. And kids from all over Hilo, I was one, Gilbert was one, were 14 and 15 respectively. And what we did was we tried to get on the boats that had capsized, the small little boats, and balance it. And it was really something that was tough to do. And Gilbert championed it. You know, he was able to be steady and he was able to balance and, and hang on to the overturned craft that was there. The same kind of steadiness I saw back then is the same kind of steadiness I saw as a mature man, as a state senator, you know, being able to work and deliver for Hilo. All the years I knew Gil, and all his years in politics, and then finally getting into the Hawaii State Legislature and becoming a leader there. You know, he was never a demagogue. You know, not a guy to get up on a, a stool and be a rabble rouser, you know, with an inflamed speech to get people moving on all that. Yeah. He just had a real quiet, matter-of-fact way of speaking. Uh, his strengths included the ability to organize people, the ability to bring people together for all the right reasons. You know, the Native Hawaiian community needs unity now, more than ever. I mean, we lost a champion in Gil, but hopefully his example will be the lesson for all of us to, to get together, because unity, according to Gil Kahele, is the most precious possession we have, you know? And uh, if there's anything we can learn from, from Gil is that uh, I think united we stand a lot better than divided. He was strong, he was smart. I can keep throwing accolades about the man, what his accomplishments had been and have been. And uh, even as he's gone, you know, his legacy lives on. He is very deserving of this award because if you look at his record based on what he's done for schools in our area, K through 12, the high schools, if you look at the hospital, if you look at the harbors, and if you look at the University of Hawaii at Hilo, what he's done in a very short period of time to enhance, to enrich, to better the quality of our lives here in Hilo for generations that are yet to come because those things that he's put in place you know, will be endearing and be a benefit to people being born and people living today way, way after he's gone. So he has a legacy that I think is very standing and uh, very, very pivotal to Hilo and the island's quality of life. Aloha, ahi ahi kako, good evening everyone. You know, it's a little uh, um, tough to watch that uh, beautiful video of my dad and, and it brings back uh, all kinds of memories, but uh, on behalf of our family, you know, we really, really appreciate um, UH Hilo and, and the Alumni Association choosing to honor my dad and our father and our husband tonight. Um, Thank you so much. You know, I want to thank Gerald DeMello for honoring and uh, um, nominating my dad for tonight. Thank you so much, Gerald. Wanted to also um, mention Harold and Amy Bugato. They're there in the back. They were and uh, my dad's class of 1960 and longtime friends. Also Stan Rorig, another really good friend of my dad's. You know, it's a really an honor for my dad to be in this group with Jackie and Mayor Harry and Lindell. 
and uh, it's an honor for our family. I'd also like to thank Craig and Audrey for hosting our family tonight on your table. Thank you so much. You know, my dad was born in Mililii in, in 1942, and he graduated from Hilo High School. He probably served in the uh, United States Marine Corps. He graduated from Laney College in the Bay Area. And he came home to Hawaii in the late 1960s to start a career in civil service in the United States uh, government and in the Army. He met my mom in 1968, September 4th to be exact. And my mom at the time was a brand new uh, stewardess for United Airlines. And she was on a layover in Waikiki. My dad was uh, just come home from the Marines, was a beach boy. And they met under the Rainbow Tower of the Hilton Hawaiian Village. And they were married in 1971. I was born in 1974. My sister was born in 1976. Uh, my dad had started that career in Wahiwa, uh, working for the Army. But he always wanted to come back to the big island. Mililii was his, uh, his roots. Hilo was his home. And he always wanted to come back. So when that opportunity opened up in uh, 1977, 1978, when a position opened at Pohakuloa, my dad was able to come back home. You know, in the mid-1970s, my dad um, began this, he was a young man, and he started uh, um, really getting involved in Hawaii. You know, Hawaii was really taking shape. The Hawaiian Renaissance was taking shape at the time. Hokulea had traveled to Tahiti in 1976. The Kankan in 78, 1980, Oha was formed. And uh, our language, our hula, our culture, Mary Monarch was, uh, being the renaissance, the revitalization of who we were as, as Native Hawaiians. Kaho'olawe was all happening at the same time. In 1976, my dad was working at uh, Wahiwa, and he was um, a realtor. And one of his friends, he had never been involved in politics before, and, and I, I say this because this will segue into how politics was a means for an end for him. In 1976, he was a realtor. We were in Wahiwa. And a friend of his had invited him to a coffee hour. There was a young Hawaiian man who was, um, wasn't known to anyone, but he had decided to run for Congress. And so this uh, friend of my dad's invited him to come to a coffee hour. My dad had no idea what a coffee hour was, but said, OK, maybe it's an opportunity for me to go as a realtor, meet some people, network, drop my business card. And so they went to this home in Mililani, and uh, a small group, 10, 15 people, and this uh, young Hawaiian man uh, captivated him for uh, an hour or so and talked to him about what he uh, thought the future of Hawaii could be like and how he could help represent Hawaii in Congress. And my dad was so inspired by Daniel Keakaka in that, uh, in that living room that, that night that he uh, um, joined the Democratic Party, went to his first state convention in 1980. Him and Senator Kaka were very, very good friends for many, many years. Helped him uh, in the mid-80s become a United States senator. And that relationship uh, of my dad in politics began in 1976. For the next 35 years, my dad would end up helping candidates for all kinds of elected office, whether they were running for council, or mayor, or governor, or congress, state senator, and I see Andy here, you know, their relationship goes back a long time. Representatives, he had always was, was a guy behind the scenes, behind the curtain, helping out, canvassing, sign waving, cooking, making chili rice. He was never the one to be in the spotlight. And if you needed help on this island, especially in East Hawaii, but, but even throughout the entire part of the island, if you needed help, you're running for office, you had to go see Gil because he would take you to KTA to go meet people. Or he would take you down to Mililii, or go to Waimea, or go to Kona. He knew people all over the island. And so he was very, very effective in that. He was definitely someone that um, you wanted to go with if you're coming to this island. In 2011, my dad, at 69 years old, was given the opportunity of a lifetime when he was appointed to the Hawaii State Senate by then Governor Neil Abercrombie. And in the five years that my dad served all of you and our, our Hilo community in this state. He really made an immeasurable impact um, in our community, particularly here at UH Hilo. Um, Jackie earlier talked about what uh, um, is a common theme of all of our candidates tonight, all of our recipients, and it's that we love Hilo. 
You know, my dad loved Hilo, and he loved this uh, community, he loved this university. And two of the things that uh, um, he really put his mark on were mentioned earlier, and that's the Hale Alahonua um, Student Housing Building, and also the College of Pharmacy. And he fought tooth and nail for that College of Pharmacy. That, that program was built, or it was uh, um, conceptualized 10, 15 years prior. You can read the book, The Emergence of the College of Pharmacy, and realize that it started way before him. But when he came into office, it needed somebody to close the deal. It needed somebody to get that program and that building with accreditation on the line uh, into the end zone. And, and uh, you saw those uh, football pictures of my dad. He was number 55, Hilo High School. He was the tailback. And, uh, um, and he did that, you know, $31 million College of Pharmacy building being built right here on Komohana Street. And he fought tooth and nail to, to, to bring that home to Hilo. And, and he failed the first time. He'll tell you, the first year, 2012, I'm not sure, Jerry, we thought we were going to get the money. Came down to conference. Uh, everyone knew this was Gil Kahele's number one priority. Uh, David Ige at the time, governor now, was the Ways and Means Chair, and the legislature wouldn't do it. A lot of people still felt on Oahu that this building and that program should be on Oahu. Um, and he was really disappointed. But instead of being angry, instead of being upset, you know, and uh, going in and ranting and raving and accusing people of, of uh, going back on their word. The very next morning at 8 o'clock, with Omiyagi in hand, he was back there in uh, Senator David Ige's office saying, hey, what can I do over the next six to nine months so that next year maybe we can get this for you, Chilo? And he did. And we're so successful that we have this building and this project and the difference it's going to make for UH Chilo and our community uh, will have a lasting impact for such a long time. That's a big thing my dad did for Hilo. He also treasured the little things. And I'll tell you one of the little things he did that probably nobody in this room knows except my mom and my sister. Um, and it was those little things that would make a difference. You're driving down Kanoe Lehua. You're headed to the airport. You're in the right-hand lane. And as you approach Leilani Street, the rubbish dump road, three, four years ago, it was only right turn, yeah? All of a sudden, you can go straight now. <laughs> For so many years, my dad would be at that intersection and would be like, how come I can't go straight? No makes sense, you know? We should be able to go straight. One of the first things he did when he got uh, appointed called Glenn Okimoto, Department of Transportation, J.D. Norisaki, of course, Governor Ige, the, I mean, he's Governor Abercrombie, the stars were all aligned, and he said, I want that right lane to go straight. <laughs> change the sign, make it happen. I don't want studies, I don't want it to take five years, I want it changed right now. And that's why you can go straight. I would take my dad to the airport many, many times over the last few years, and he, was always, he would always tell me, hey boy, get in my lane over there. Go straight, <laughs> you know? So, you know, um, those are the little things that uh, really made a difference, things that made sense. Um, back to UH Hilo, my dad was very proud of the University of Hawaii. Hilo Chancellor Strain, he knows that. They've had many spirited conversations together. Um, also proud of our community college and the role that it plays here in Hilo. My dad was committed to growing this university um, in its enrollment and its programs, and he also knew that the University of Hawaii at Hilo and the community college was just a, 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 as much a part of Hilo as Hilo needed to be a part of our university. That was very, very important to him. He firmly believed that education, um, and in particular higher education, at our state's public institution should be affordable, it should be accessible for Hawaii students on all islands, especially the ones that come from the most rural communities, Ka'u, Mililii, Kohala, that everyone had an opportunity to pursue higher education and do it right here in Hawaii. Governor Burns' uh, vision for the university was that anyone in Hawaii, anyone, with the ability and the desire and the discipline to get a college education should be able to do that and get a world-class education right here in Hawaii. My dad truly, truly believed in that. And I'll leave you with this final thought. Maybe you can take it uh, home with you tonight. My dad would often say, it's not what we receive that enriches our lives, it's what we give. It's not what we receive, 
that enriches our lives. It's what we give. Each of us in this room have only a certain, you know, a, a certain period of time on, on this earth. And my dad really believed that everyone could make a difference, that one person could change the world. And so, you know, take that away tonight, is that you can make a difference. Give more than you receive. We, we help scholarship recipients this evening. Help someone in your community. We, we, need, we have so much people that need help in our community, whether it's inspiring a child or building a future for Mayor, your granddaughter, um, or helping someone uh, that really needs our help. Um, do that. And, and my dad would be uh, uh, so happy and smiling down at all of you. Again, mahalo for this honor um, on behalf of our family. For me, I looked at that picture of my dad um, standing behind his chair holding the microphone and, uh, and today that's my, that's my desk, it's my chair. And it makes me so proud to honor him and to honor each and every one of you. And I sit in that chair every single day. I think about my dad, I think about Hilo, I think about the Hawaii um, that I hopefully will be able to build for our future generations. And uh, it's the greatest honor for my life to, uh, right now to do that. So thank you so much. Mahalo nui loa and aloha.